Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Performance Zone, the special edition of the Performance Zone. This is week two. Last week, I had my friend, my special guest with me here, Pat Gross from Australia, uh, for actually from Yorkshire in England by via Australia. You're going, you're going the long way around to be here today, again, as always. And last week, uh, we had a really interesting call, and actually, we're going to make that available to you. We'll get, uh, if not today, the next session we have, we'll let you know how you can get access to that to get the recorded calls. And uh, Pat, give us a refresh. What we talk about last time? Oh, do you know what? I've completely ah, forgotten. It was a week ago. Why you can't start building on the tenth floor, guys? We talked about you know a lot how a lot of people. It was really it was great content. And uh, no, in case you haven't noticed, and if you noticed, if you watched last week, and if you're noticing this week, this isn't. These are not structured. These are kind of fly by the seat of our pants with topics that we think are important for people to know about. So that's why you kind of see the going back and forth. And I want to throw throw Pat on the spot there for a minute. But what we spoke about was why you can't start building on the tenth floor. About why you have to have a foundation. And oftentimes, especially in today's world where people want to do everything so fast accelerated the microwave mentality about well let's see if i start my business on thursday i should be a millionaire by monday morning um i've heard stories of people that do that but that's the exception not the rule but oftentimes what people do is they think they're already thinking about steps four five and six hence the term building on the starting on the 10th floor and they haven't thought about steps one two and three and even what precedes steps one two and three and that's kind of why we're here because there are things in the entrepreneurial world and in the business world, the self-employed world, I guess is what we're talking about, along with entrepreneurs. And yes, there is a distinction. We'll get to that in one of our future sessions here on the, the special edition of the Performance Zones. But today, uh, so last week we, we talked about the precursors, certain things that people have to know and what you wanna know, because I'm telling you right now, and I, I do this with people on a regular basis, when they think, oh, but I've got all that in order. I said, or do you? And when we go back and ask a few questions, we can often find that they're missing certain pieces. And this is not just you guys. Believe me, the reason we know this kind of stuff is because we've been through it. We've been through those things. We've been through the trenches. So part of why we're here is to show you that there are better ways, to show you that there are options, alternatives, and there's a knowledge base, not just anything you find on the internet, but real, useful, tried in the trenches knowledge and information that's out there that you can utilize that will help expedite your success in your business. So that was last week. And this week, what we're going to talk about is focusing on what you really, if you're watching that, really want. Because oftentimes people get started and they think they want something. And right, Pat, they find out what they really want is something else, but they've been focusing on uh, what they think they want, what the, what the nice to haves, but not the must haves. And, you know, focus, this is going to take, there's, a, there's so many different ways we can go on focus, but um, and, and actually there's a couple of things that you have, I want to get to in a, in a minute, but what are your, talk about focus and how important it's been to you. Uh, extremely important. Look, a couple of weeks ago, I just want to start with a quote that I found because I, one of the things I really do is do myself, you know, my self-education and I was reading a book and um, the prosperity bible and in there is James Allen who said and I was thinking about this just recently because let, let's just get to right now I mean okay um, we're into the new year um, I know these things are not supposed to be time so related but we've just passed a new year people do new year's resolutions and and I read this just at that time so I have to put the context you know the foolish wish and grumble the wise work and wait and that's where I sort of I found with focus is that it's not just about putting it out there that you want to do you know something to happen um, and, or you start doing things you've really got to continue. You really have to know the goal. Focus on the goal. See it, feel it, hear it. And make sure that goal is, <sighs> you could say, I want a new piece of equipment. You know, I want to focus on, I focus on that. I know somebody at the moment who's looking for some, a new piece of equipment and they're focusing on that. And I'm going, is that what they're looking for? Right. You know, why do they want that equipment? So, you know, are you focusing on what you really want? So and it was a, it was just a timely reminder that we're having this conversation today. Um, and it sort of opened up my mind um, a lot because um, just before Christmas, I was um, undergoing a procedure in, a, in an MRI machine in, in a tunnel. And um, 
are, um, I received a bit of upsetting news before I went, went under and I was told I was going to be under for nearly an hour, which freaked me out in two sessions. First time I went under, I had no focus. Okay. I went mm -hmm. in there, my mind was open and everything came in. All the fear, all the little devils on your shoulder, everything. And I built myself into a real panic. And that's what people do. It's not so much even, even focusing what you want. You have to focus on how you're going to get there. Right. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get back to the James Allen quote. You focus on how you're going to get there. And to me, that was, you know, the, my goal was to, to, get, to, to get out of the tunnel at the other end, you know, in a peaceful state of mind. Well, obviously, I didn't achieve that first time because I had no focus on how. I knew what I wanted, but I had no focus on how. Uh, but the second time I went in, because... <laughs> um, I felt as though I was being sort of blackmailed into going back into the second time because they said, if you don't do it, you'll have to do it again later. Um, so this time I actually had a focus. I knew I had, a, I, knew I had a, a time limit. They said it was going to take about 15 to 20 minutes this session. So, so immediately I thought, what do I have available? And I had my hands. So I set about focusing on each finger 60 seconds. And I had a goal of doing 15 fingers. Well, obviously, my version of 60 seconds is a lot longer than the real minute. Right, so, I was really, right. <laughs> so I was really happy to come out after 13, sec 13 minutes and, um, you know, not a problem. So it really brought home to me. And I think for 2022, that has actually taught me that in your desk, on my desk, for example, I, I'm used to sort of doing a little biz, doing a little bit of that. You know, one of these people that tends to have a few balls in the air at the same time. But actually, if you actually focus on what you're doing, you know, not checking your email or um, or having a second distraction, but focus, it's amazing in those blocks of time, just how much you actually get done. You still get the work done, but you're not stressing yourself doing it. Right. <laughs> and, and you get and, and that's the thing I love when people talk about multitasking and I say, I, I don't that's not me. I have to focus on one thing. But it's kind of like, you know, we're talking about, you know, focusing on what you want. And then you're talking about that experience in the MRI machine. Again, I forget who said this quote. It, it could have been Seneca. Um, I'll have to double check. But it, it, the quote is, we suffer more often in our imagination than in reality. And, and yes. that's how strong the focus is. And, I, I, you know, dealing with people as I have for the last 30 plus years, one of the things that's, and, and this is something that my mentors drove home to me and I've read in books and I've seen in other videos, you know, and different speakers and all the seminars I've attended, you know, you hear it in, from so many different people in so many different ways. And ultimately it's that thing of, you know, like, look, because people talk about, well, I don't, then I won't have any problems. And it's like, no, you're always going to have problems. You're always going to have problems, right? There's a young guy that I was on the phone, I was on a Zoom call with shortly, uh, the hour before this. And he's a very successful young guy. And we were talking about that. And he said, look, when his, he sold his businesses and for quite a, he had some very successful businesses. He sold them for a very pretty penny and he's probably in his 31 or 32. I mean, he'll never have to work another day in his life, but he's looking for things to do and he wants to help people and all this. And he said, yeah, I, I've just sell, I've still got problems. They're just different sorts of problems. So the thing is like, don't focus on not having problems, focus on solving the problems and that the way you can do that is focus on what you want focus on and because what you focus on you know it's like the old uh, magnifying glass when we were kids right you know the if you got them in a did you guys have cracker jacks growing up was that a, was that a thing for you guys yes yeah and Those we used to have the little that, prize yes. in the box right Go, like caramel, yeah. caramel corn and the prize in the box and oftentimes we'd get a magnifying glass right and our big thing was to burn little holes in pieces of paper or to bunch up some grass or to take some insects or something and you know not that you know just cruel i guess to the insect but the point is you hold the magnifying glass you can't take the magnifying glass and go around in a circle like this and our minds often get like that we call it monkey brain right where your mind's jumping around and jumping 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 all the different things and and that just doesn't solve anything but if you hold that magnifying glass still, even the cheap little one coming out of the Cracker Jack box, it will do its job. It will focus the sun in the one point and you'll get a result. And that's another thing, right? Focus on the processes, not always the result. You got to get the process going because the process is what gives you the result, right? But then, you know, 
and if it's not the result you want, you change the process, right? That, that's all that kind of stuff. But today the challenge is this little critter right here, right? The lovely little cell phone, the notifications, the, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's so many different things that, and these are more personal distractions. How hard is it? Like I've got the mute. I think I've got the mute on. Let me double or the, the, oh, no, I don't. There, do not disturb. Because those things can, you hear the little, people hear the little ping. And it's so often out of Zoom, you can tell. They say, no, I have the do not disturb on. Then I don't hear the ping, but they turn the volume down. And you can see their eyes go like this. And now in that moment, now that tells me they're not thinking about what we're trying to accomplish. So those are the personal distractions. Um, there's business, there's business focus, right? There's personal focus, business focus, uh, you know, social focus, all these different things that we want to have happen. So I, I guess with the personal side, what do you do? You know, because you, as you said, you've often got three or four balls up in the air. And I, I know this from the last couple of years that I've known you, you've always got something going on, multiple things going on. And that's just on the business side, let alone what's going on with grandkids and children and, you know, life. And, and that's just normal. Forget now throw COVID on there and it makes it all crazier. What are some of the things you do to keep your focus? Let's just start with the personal side to keep Pat focused on what Pat needs to do. Um, set aside time, block off the time to do it. Um, but I'm still learning. I mean, the, the older you get doesn't mean you get that much wiser. You just, <laughs> Um, I that. I was Don't just, say that. <laughs> you got me thinking actually you got me thinking about the experience when I was actually uh, going up a mountain and now you will know this more in the sports area which you've been talking about but uh, I'm not the fittest person certainly need to lose some weight I was up the mountain with with my daughter and my granddaughter and they can just we had to this last bit it's Mount Buffalo and it's it's like a um it's called the horn and to get up there it's a steep sort of climb um it's not i mean people do it it's not sort of uh, one of these for for advanced only but i got to that point and i was really going i can't do this i can't do this i knew what i wanted to be i knew what i wanted to do but my you know again the demons or whatever were saying i can't do this but you know and this is what this is what i do in my life this is why i'm relating to it because you know people say if you say you can't you can't that's rubbish because my, my you know it's like i'm having my subconscious overtakes my conscious and my conscious and my subconscious says just get on and do it <laughs> so, so so i actually you know I'm, I'm going up all the time going i can't do this i can't do this till i actually get to the top so, so, so I'm just saying to you that that's why I do it. And, and now, now you've mentioned it in lots of situations where I can't make my mind up whether I want to do something or not. Um, in the end, I suppose I am, con I just let myself, I let myself, my inner self make the decision for me, if that makes sense. <laughs> it, it does, because the subconscious that, that, you know, it's often said that the subconscious is like a seven to nine year old child. And you can't tell them not to do stuff or that they can't do stuff because it'll the child in us will just go do it. And so sometimes it's just good right. to turn that over to the child. I mean, and, and to remove the barriers. I mean, it said, you know, you mentioned the sports area. And to, if you don't know me, if you if this is your first time seeing me, I have a background in the martial arts. I competed in Taekwondo for many years and then I coached later. And w one of my skills, and I use this in my business today, or, and one of my beliefs and my missions is to help people get the most out of themselves, where there was this young kid named Richard Ahn. I don't know if I told you, I may have told you this story, but Richard was one of our young budding athletes in the late nineties, amazingly talented young man, but had a mental block because he focused on the mental block. He focused on that. He could not make it through the quarterfinals of an event. And the thing in Taekwondo at the time, the way it was structured was if you made the medal, if you made the semifinals, you were guaranteed a medal. So you're at least a bronze medal. Cause we would give two third place, one second and one first. And um, Richard had all the talent to get there, but he couldn't mentally, he couldn't make the, the jump because he was talk about monkey brain. He was always focusing on, he was overthinking what he had to do in the ring or overthinking what his opponent was going to do. Right. He was total head case. So we went to Barcelona, Spain. We had to actually to Spain, went to two tournaments. The second tournament was the big one. It was the city tournament in Barcelona. 
And what happened was um, it was one of the very, it was a top tournament, just a step below um, what would be the Grand Prix circuit today. Because Barcelona is a major city, uh, you know, access from all over the Mediterranean. You'd have teams from Tunisia, from France, from Italy, uh, all over Spain would come to Barcelona to this particular tournament, which made it a very high level tournament. So Richard, oh, this is, I love this story. We were in the quarterfinals. I'm coaching him. And I said, okay, Richard. And I said, I'm looking at the guy. I said, see that guy over there? You're about to fight. I said, you make it through this. You're in the semis. You're guaranteed a medal. I said, that guy, I, I fought his instructor, his coach. He and I fought in 1985. He was an 88 Olympian. I know what this kid's going to do. I know. I said, this is Spain. I've lived here. I know these people. They're my friends. I know their style of fighting. And I went and I built it all up. Like I know everything there is to know about this match. And he's looking at me with, you know, like a kid in a candy store going like, you're going to give me the secret to beat this guy and I'll get through. But he was still in his own head. You could see his movements were tight. His breathing was shallow and all this stuff. And I said, Richard, I want you to look around and see all these people. They're watching this match right now. They're watching you. They're watching me. And after I told him again about all the different things that I knew, I said, the most important thing that you have to remember as you step out onto the mat is make me look good. And I sat down in the chair. I didn't say another word. And he looked at me and just was like, like I had, I was giving him all that information that I pulled it back. And what I did in that moment, and it was just, a, you know, at the time I, I didn't know why I did it. Now I look back and oh, okay, thank you. The universe was giving me the right things to say. He took a big, deep breath. All that craziness left his head and he focused on me because he wasn't focusing on losing. He wasn't focused because, oh, I can place the blame on, I allowed him to place any future blame on me if he lost. He knocked the kid out first round, went to the semifinals, won that, made it to the final, got a silver medal. And from that point on, went on to become a six-time U.S. national team member, a Pan Am Games bronze medal, no, a Pan Am Taekwondo champion and a World Cup bronze medalist at the, but and he's just, you know, and he tells that story today too. He says, I'll never forget. I was so mad at you. I was so disappointed. And then, but I relaxed and I, I stopped focusing on the negative. And I just, he went out and it allowed him to go do what he did. Now I didn't really do anything except get him out of his, get him out of his own way, but it allowed him to that. It, it took the focus off of all the stuff that could go wrong. And, and that's the little thing. That's how powerful focus is. One small little shift can make the entire difference. Like it did with your hand. You focused, you counted fingers. Your counting of a minute was much longer than what an actual minute was, <laughs> right? So after, what was it probably, 20 or 25 minutes, you only counted to 13 minutes and you were already out. And like, yes. oh, that, that was quick because it's all perception, right? It's all that whole timing is perception. So, and, and folks, that's kind of what we're, if you're watching this, we're kind of talk about the one thing that can accelerate you is controlling your focus. Now, how do you do that? You can do it with questions. You can do it with diagrams. You can do it with a checklist. You can do it with a template. Like if you're doing a business and Pat's got some, some strategy stuff on business strategies, business preparation. Um, what do you call it? The one is the, it's not the Bible, but um, what do you call entrepreneurial. it? Uh, no, not no. The, the, oh, the, 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 oh, the DI, the DI strategic planning tool. Okay. Yeah. 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 The strategic planning tool. It, it's guys, this and is so they, simple. It gives you, it creates a step by step. So what does that do? It allows you to, you can actually put it in writing. You can put it into the app and actually we should tell them how to get the app. Is it in the app store? Oh yeah. And yet, no, that's not, but you're talking about the, uh, are you talking about the business uh, building the business case? Cause we've got that as well. Okay. Um, is it, I've got a, I've got a few tools around. Well, no, then the, the, the do your, the strategy, that's different. You can email Pat. Um, we can say, give you her information, but it gives you a step-by-step you know, things to do when it comes to business. Now you could apply that. You could probably modify it and do it to your personal life. If you're trying to get healthy, see, because the thing is your, your focus and your thoughts, like we've talked about this, you can't plant watermelon seeds and expect to get roses. So if your thoughts are, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I'm not capable. Somebody else beat me to it. Like the book I'm writing, right? I, I think I told you I'm writing a book with a, with the help. Somebody else is helping me. And somebody else came out, they already published their book and it's almost identical. Now I know they didn't steal anything from us, but it's going to, you know, but I mean, you know, so guys don't wait. Now I can sit there and take that as a, as a, um, oh no, somebody else already published. I'm still publishing my book. We'll just have to make some tweaks and do some different things. But 
guys, there's, there's no reason to stop. So my focus now is to get my book finished, see how we, and look at the, the different steps on how to, on, on how, we, how we're going to publish and how we're going to market. Because uh, my, I did, I will say that I've read a little bit of her book and mine's much funnier. <laughs> it's much, it's you- much more, if I do say so myself. But, but that's the thing is the, the whole concept of where you place your focus determines the results you're going to get. And if you have a step-by-step plan, whether it's for business or for personal, that's what's going to accelerate your results. And I go back on that one because um, this is what I find in strategic planning. I mean, I built, I, we built our business working with the not-for-profit sector and they are you know, pretty good when it comes to understanding the concept of strategic planning. But because I live in regional Victoria in Australia, I sometimes get approached by some business owners. Okay, and this is where I find, um, which I find is interesting, um, is that uh, first of all, the, the focus of any, any business owner is that is that vision, and the number of businesses that people go into business without actually that end goal in mind. How on earth that you know? How on earth can they do the business and have the energy to achieve those steps if they don't actually know where they're going? So, that, that's, so to me, it's kind of it's kind of like having your money set aside, <laughs> your clothes packed, the car's gassed up, and somebody says, "I'm going." You got the time off of work, and you say, "I'm going on vacation. I got the money, I got the car, I got the time off, I got my clothes packed. Where are you going? I don't know." And that's an example of you're focusing on getting the car, the tires, you know, all that sort of stuff. You focus on them, but what you really want to focus is where you're going. Right. That's <laughs> and that's the key too. Like it, when you have that vision. And I'm a big fan of having the vision, goals, and objectives. But if you don't have a vision, that the pad is exactly that is that is so spot on because often I see that so much. I mean, and again, I've been there. I was that guy where I thought I had to look at the details first so that I could get there. But no, it, it's not how it works. You got to know what the overall result is, and and also to tie it in with your values. Why is it important to you? What's what's really important about that vision? that you accomplish it. Yes. And then I'm going to add, because people think vision, mission, values. One thing that they tend to forget, or that it's easy to forget, is to to strategically focus on what do I need to do to get there? And those are your priorities. And they are what needs to change, what needs to happen, and then what do I need to do? So, for instance, if you if you're in a business and you want to get to this point, uh, um, you've got a you know an, a, a turnover of blah blah blah. You've got a market of blah blah blah. So, what you need to do, what needs to happen, is you need to have a good marketing plan. For example, you need to have good staff. You need to have um, you might have uh, your systems, your policies, and procedures are all over the place. So, you know, in your business, that you need to have a focus on them as well. So, what do you need to focus on? Okay, again, the word focus. So to achieve where you want to go. And then from that focus, you know, if you want to focus on your policies and your procedures that set in your systems, then you can break that down into the, the, you know, the priorities. You know, what, we need to do this, we need to do this. And that gets you, you, you've already in your mind, again, you're feeding your subconscious here of, you know, what, what needs to happen. Now, there's, there's some numbers where so we, we talked about this last week about, if you've got to have a plan in place, you've got to keep visiting that plan on a regular basis. Um, right. You got to see if it's the producing same... the results you want. Right. I mean, yeah. if it's not, you got to change it. But at the same time, because you've done it, you've, you've, you've instructed your subconscious to focus on it. So uh, I found that, you know, I was talking about um, some things. And I put this vision came out with 10,000 community entrepreneurs in 75 countries was there. And then, so what needs to happen, we need to have an international focus, right? I've just given an example here. And then, okay, so what comes along is an opportunity to, to be part of a network that's international. Now, I wouldn't have put that down initially. I just knew what I needed. And then the opportunity comes along and it gels, it sticks like glue to that focus that you're thinking about so if you know if you've got those focus areas that you need to work on and put them in in yourself and you know what they are to achieve the ultimate focus and that ultimate focus may be down the line so you probably would have a a focus in three or five years time of where you want to be there that's that's just as well all and well and good 
right. at least you know where you're going. And, yeah. and you say you've, the focus becomes the driver. <laughs> right. And, and that's that's why it's so important. That's why I like the strategic planning and, and you know, the, the setup you have, because it actually from that, you actually design the steps. You start going out and working backwards. You end up designing what steps actually, because most people, they get to a point. What I have found with the clients that I've worked with throughout the years is that they'll get to a certain point and then they, they come up with, I don't know what to do next because they've gone part way and they've not gone right. Cause what's that lead to? And then what's that lead to? And then why is that important? And we take them, we chunk them up and then we chunk them back down a little bit and it really gets back. And I just did again, guys, just so you know, the reason we know this stuff is because we've done it and continue to do it on a regular basis because that that's, and this, it's not, this is not a one and done guys. This is not like you learn it once you do it once and you're done. You got to be willing to, because once you get, once you achieve one thing, you're going to want to do something else. So learn the fundamentals, right? This is what we talked about in the last session about building that foundation, because once we build this, build this foundation, and then we get up from the basement, then into the garage, then into the, um, you know, the first floor of the building and the, the lobby, and then your, your other floors, the mezzanines, and then you got the the first living floor, second, you know, then all the way up to floor 10, then floor 15, 20. That's how they build skyscrapers, but they don't start on the 10th floor. They start. That's what we spoke about last week. Now, once you have those fundamentals down, once you move to it, hey, I want to take the plan to another level, you just repeat the process, but now you already know how to do it. Does that make sense? All right. And that's what we're talking about here. That, that's why this is so, you know, again, is it fundamental stuff? Yes. And as the late, great Jim Rohn said, this, this was one of the funniest things I ever heard him say. There are no new fundamentals. He said, people are not manufacturing antiques. That's not how it works. Fundamentals do not go out of style. They so The fundamentals that we need. Now, it may have changed, as Larry Thompson told me. The strategies remain the same, but the tactics may change because it's 20. Like the same thing about, and I probably mentioned this to you in one of our chats. My dad was the head of his household in 1940. He was 16 years old. His father passed away. He was the eldest male. Boom, it falls on him, right? That's how it worked back then. And so that was in 1940. That was 82 years ago. Now, I've been the head of the household for a while, but if I compare what the head of a household in, in 2022 does to, to, to 1940, yeah, strategically, it's the same. But tactically, it's very different. Right. I mean, people used to get paid every week. Um, you know, that doesn't happen. I remember when a house would cost, you could buy what 50 years ago, you get a house for ten thousand dollars. Can't do that now. That's not even a down payment on a house, right? That's not even a car. <laughs> you just I mean, excuse me. <clears throat> you just reminded me of the conversation we had last week. Uh, um, when I said that, you know, I, I went away and spent three years le relearning the marketing landscape and and all this new social media that was coming on a few years ago, I wanted to get to the end of it and realise that I already knew it. The only thing that had changed was the tools, the tactics, social media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, I was talking with this young guy, John was helping me with some some stuff on the you know, on my end. And see, guys, th this is the thing. See, Pat and I are still learning. We are, shall we say, mature adults. We're not, we're not children. We don't need to get into that. But, but we're at a stage, even at the stages of our careers, we're still learning. Because, and especially now, because folks, here's the, here's the deal. Things are going to continue to change. Paul Zane Pilzer touched on this in his book, Unlimited Wealth. I've talked about him ad nauseum. He, he was brilliant. In 1990, he talked about how technology will change everything we do. And he's right. And it has. And especially look at the way, I mean, can you even remember when you didn't have a cell, a smartphone? Right? I mean, when did you not have your banking on your phone? When did you not have, I mean, I remember we, oh, this is funny. We were even PayPal's kind of outdated because we were sending money to Gabby. My daughter, as you know, she's in, in Newcastle in the UK. We were sending money via PayPal and, um, it, it, it takes too long and it's too expensive. There's a new wire service out where you can send money anywhere in the world in minutes for pennies on the dollar. It cost, it was, ha it was like less than 50% of what it cost me to send it through PayPal. 
because when they, they nailed me when you were changing it from dollars to pounds and um, you know the exchange rate and then the fee they charge. But this, this company doesn't do that. They give you whatever the rate is at the moment, you get that rate. And then uh, it was like, I think to send $3 to $300 was like $1.69. That was amazing, right? But that's technology. That's how we can do all these things. So folks, that technology is changing as you're watching this. So, it, But the fundamentals and the strategies don't change. If you stay on top of the tools, you're going to be able to stay ahead of the game. Kids coming out of college, they're going to be behind. College is going to change, in my opinion, because by the time they get out of college, unless you're going to school for like exercise science or medical, be a doctor, um, a specific type of engineer, even engineering, a lot of these over here, we have the, in the U.S., we have these um, technical schools. So instead of going for four years to college and coming out with a quarter million dollars in debt, you go to tech school for six months and you're employable. That's tough over here. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so it's, it's there. But I mean, I, th this is cool. I love stuff like this because focus, you know, control your focus You control, and you can accelerate your results it's faster than ever before because of technology, because of if you have a good game plan. But like Pat pointed out a few minutes ago, you've got to have your vision down, know what it is and why it's important to you. And I will add on that you must know who you are in relation to it so that you can know who, what, how, what changes you have to make. Because if you, if you were capable of achieving it and just had the vision, then, you, then if it was all about just wanting it bad enough, then every kid would have a pony, right? And we know that not every kid gets a pony. So, but when you find out who you are and who you are in relation to it, that makes a big difference as well. But figure out where you're going or else you're just going to be spinning your wheels and we'll have the same conversation next year. Now, there's this, uh, just been thinking here, talking about, you know, you get what you want in what you put out there. And this topic of there is, is why you need to focus on what you really want. And um, it just got me think. it got me thinking, because I, I went through that whole process a couple of years ago. And... Um, and it actually, it's, it, it's, it's a mindset. If you can understand what it is you, that your goal is and then step into that, what does it look like, feel like, etc. It actually then is like a ripple effect on other parts of your life because your mind has changed. It's not got putting the barriers in the way and the negatives in the way, etc. And uh, I'll just give this the very, very simple way that, you know, another part of my life, it had a dramatic influence. I'm touching wood uh, is that um, uh, you hear about these people who find it extremely easy to find a car park. In the busiest place in town. And I was going through a stretch, I had a friend, I was in Melbourne before COVID hit. And um, whenever I was around, I would be, I would be given a call going, I found a car park. And, and it was not, wasn't the fact that I'd found a car park. It was that the car parking space was directly outside every time where I wanted to be. And, and now you just go, you know, like you, you drive around and people go, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to find a car And I just go, one's going to appear. Yeah. You know, you just, you just know. So <laughs> it, it certainly, it certainly has an impact on what you put out there. Right. And, and that's the thought, right? That, so if you're focusing again, you can't plant watermelons and expect to get roses. I mean, that's, you know, watermelons are good if that's, but if you're wanting roses, you got to plant roses. You got to plant the seed of where's, where's the, the parking spot or the car park, as you guys would, would say, right? It, it's, but I know exactly what you mean. I've got friends like that too. Everywhere they go, they find parking. There's never, it's never a question. And it's always relatively close to what they want to do. Not right out in front like yours was, but it's relatively close. And, and that works in everything else though. I mean, because focus on what you want, not, you know, actually what we could do next week a little bit, we might want to talk about this and just talk about the concept because we're already at the, we're already at 32 minutes. So um, the concept of focusing on what, on what you want and what you really want is kind of how we started today. Because so many people focus on what they think they want. And it's not really what they want. And we kind of talked about this before the call started too a little bit. And so we, we might want to do that for next week is just start next week. We'll do a double whammy on the focus because, or, or at least maybe recapping the focus a little bit and then covering the concept of what is it that you really want? How do you know what you really want? And how do we tie that in there? Because that's something that 
once people get clear on the difference between the nice to haves and the must haves, that makes a huge difference as well. And, that, and that's what also holds their focus mm -hmm. because it's something that they want, they love, they need, they're, they're driven that, that whole, uh, you know, like, like athletes, right. When they're, when they're, they, they want that gold medal. You know, somebody asked me one time, how much gold is in your gold medals? And I said, well, not much. It's plated gold, but it's not the, it's not the metal that's worth. It's what it took me to get it. That's where the value is in, in what it took me to get that medal. Now, I, I'm going to challenge you here because one of the words you used, just used, was the word need. Mm. Okay. I know what you're saying, but if right? you approach things with the focus of needing something, it's, but it's not actually the same as a focus of, it's mine. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. No, good catch. No, and you're, you're right. And, and this is why I see guys, it's not about being perfect. It's about progress, not perfection. That's an, well, and that's another thing that people, people go after. They're always, they're looking for that perfect model. Doesn't work that way. Right. Again, I got the education the hour before this started, this guy and John was telling me, he said, it's not about, <clears throat> he said the first the first couple of times you do this particular marketing process, he said, you might not get anything. It's not about that. It's, it's just about testing and being in the game. And that's the thing. If you're not in the game, you're not going to win. That's how you win the game is you got to be in the game. You got to be trying. You got to be pushing. You got to be wanting. You got to be learning, constantly learning. Surround yourself with good people too. That's another thing. You cannot hang out with, with people who are not successful doing what you want to do and expect that group, and I'm not saying kick out your friends and divorce your wife or your husband or your spouse, but you got to surround yourself with like-minded people. You cannot, um, what's the old saying? If you lay down with dogs, you come up with fleas, right? And so you got to surround yourself. Yeah, well, sometimes you got to be a little harsh. Yes. Oh, I know. Right? Sometimes, I, I sometimes you yes. got to be harsh and you got to be out. You have to call it what it is and say, you can't, when I was competing, when I was a young man, I was in my early 20s. And um, upstate New York, cold in the winter, hot in the summer, and beautiful in between with spring and fall. And, uh, you know, you're at that age where you're going out to the clubs, you're going out to the pubs, you're going out to the, you know, people are having cocktails and meeting and listening to music and having fun. And my friends used to say all the time, hey, you got to come out with us. I said, no. You guys... If I had to work, that was one thing. If I was working at the bar, that's one thing. But I still went home and went to bed. We're going to go have to an after party. I'm not going. I got to run in the morning. Because if I had to stay, if I stayed out till two in the morning working at the bar, I still was expected by my teammates to be there at 5.30 or 6 a.m., whatever the time was to run. I was expected to be there, ready to go. Bells on, right? And so I was able to, I don't want to say eliminate, eliminate because there, there's ways to do it. And again, if you're married, I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting in any way, shape or form that you divorce your spouse or fire your family and never talk to them. But I didn't have people around me that were positive. And sometimes it was more because they were trying to joke, but it didn't, it doesn't help, right? When you're people that are close to you, you know, piss on your dreams for lack of a better word, not to be vulgar, but I mean, it, it doesn't, even if they're joking, it doesn't come across like that. So I limited my conversations with people about what my dream was. My dream was to make the Olympic team and win an Olympic gold medal. Now I didn't make it, got pretty close, but didn't make it quite, didn't quite get there. And again, I'm better off for having that experience. It was wonderful, but I was willing to give up the pubs. I was willing to give up that cute girl that you like is going to be there. And she wants to see you at this party. And she really wants to talk to you. You can meet her. I said, well, it'll have to be another time because I've got to, I've got to get up in the morning. I'm not going to go out and get stinking drunk and smell like cigarette smoke just for a girl. I mean, we can go have lunch. Well, no, she's going to be at the party and you didn't go see her. Doesn't matter. My, my value was on, my drive was so strong for that. And then from that, of course, and here's the thing, all the people, they don't mean, because, and I say that you don't fire your friends or, or people, you can limit your exposure to them because they don't mean bad. My friends were thinking that that was a good thing to hook me up with this girl, for example. But later, 10 years, 20 years later, they're saying, wow, man, you were so disciplined. You were so focused. Nothing was going to stop you. You went to the Olympic Center. You got there. You got, you were on ESPN. We saw you on TV. We saw all this cool stuff and said, hey, that's our friend. You know, yeah, because I wasn't out drinking like a fool with them every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. And so you do, you know, I did surround myself with other people. Now, 
that was one of the things that when I, I made a move, when I left the Olympic Center, I didn't surround myself with the right people. But I wouldn't change anything because of where I am today, right? If I went back and changed that in 1987, maybe you and I wouldn't be having this conversation today. But the point is, surround yourself with good people. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because, oh my gosh, I'm prattling on. We're at 38 minutes after. Let's do this. Are you okay? Are you game with that? Let's maybe like continue the focus on, on, on especially on what you really want and talking about the differences between the must-haves and the nice-to-haves. Do you think that's a good track yeah, to that, take? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can also pick up on what you were just saying about surrounding yourself with the right people as part of your focus. Because I can give you a case study of somebody who uh, spent ten years looking for a new premises and achieved that within eighteen months after working with me. By Absolutely. changing the focus. That's what it's um, all about: bringing value to these to these people watching this right now, whether live or recorded. And then there's also uh, in one of our one of our packages, um, how to negotiate anything. There is a whole section on focus. So we maybe have, there may be something that people if people come along, they may be able to um, down you know we get gift a download an exam a sample of that of that focus section. Uh, what we can, we can even do is some shared screens and stuff like that, and show them some maybe give them some teasers yep. for that. Awesome, yep. Pat. As Sounds always, good. it's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Now I'm going to make sure I do this properly this time and not not just end the whole thing. But listen, folks. <laughs> Thank you for tuning into this special edition of the Performance Zone. We've got uh, at least five more because we're adding on an extra one for next week that we're going to morph into the, the subsequent weeks following. These will be continuing. Uh, on the, if you're here on the live time, you know the right time. It's going to be on the same Zoom link. So great for that one. And remember, in the meantime, put everything you have into everything you do because the best is yet to come. We'll see you next time.